Mom, what's for dinner? How many times do you hear that from your kids? Mom, what's for dinner? I feel like one of the hardest things about adulting nobody told you about as you're becoming an adult is you gotta think about what you're gonna have for dinner and what the rest of the family's gonna have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and snacks for the end of time. The end of time. Bonnie Hari is the food babe, and she joins us with some healthy dinner ideas to make things very simple for us. New York Times bestselling author, and you have your fourth book out, Food Babe Family. Congratulations, by Thank the way. Thank you. Um, so, give us a couple of strategies. Let's talk, let's so, talk dinner. So, dinner is the time where I think is the most crucial for everybody to sit down together. It's been shown that when Families sit down together, you eat healthier, you have better rates of success in school, better rates and success of your mental health, and it's something that we all have to work on happening. I know everyone is so busy with their own lives and work, and yeah. everybody has school and sports and like everything that's going on, but I find this as being one of the values that I find most valuable in my house, and it's something that we do every single night. Yeah. And so, Try to get around the table, enjoy a meal, and talk about you know your day, talk about what you're yeah. eating, talk about goal setting, all of the things, and make that family bond much stronger. Um, before we get even more into your tips, let's talk about your story. How did you become a food activist? She's not just passionate about taking pretty pictures for her one and a half million followers on the Food Babes Instagram page. You're a food activist. What made you so passionate about this? Well, I was super sick as a child. I was on nine prescription drugs, had eczema, asthma, allergies. I had two surgeries, appendicitis and endometriosis in my early 20s. And so I have just experienced what it feels like to feel awful. And for most of my f life, I felt like a zombie. I felt mm -hmm. dead. And when I was finally waking up to, hey, I want to do something different. And I was reading this chapter in this book about how the majority of food in the grocery store is dead. It just, it hit me like anything. I just was just like, I can't believe that's actually how I feel and how I felt. <laughs> you felt dead. dead. And so I was like, how do I feel alive? And so I started to add as much real food to my diet as possible. And then I started to wonder and have this insatiable curiosity about all the foods I used to eat and what was actually in them mm -hmm. and why I was so addicted to them, why I wanted to eat them every single day. And so I started to research things like the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich and realizing that it had close to 100 ingredients in it and that one of the first ingredients in it was MSG, an ingredient that they feed to rats in obesity studies to make the rats fat. Oh my gosh, I have to say, nobody's gonna get between me and my Chick-fil-A. I love Chick-fil-A. Well, but... you know what? In my new book, Food Bay Family, I have copycat Chick-fil-A recipes in the book. Okay. Because I know how good it is, and actually my mouth is still watering, even though I haven't had it in like 15 years, because that's how strong of a chemical bond that they're doing in your brain. They're my literally goodness. hijacking your taste buds. They're using the same science as the tobacco industry created addiction in cigarettes, now they're using that same science in food to create addiction to food so that the food companies make more money. So you've gotten a lot of people to sign petitions and actually create change in the fast food industry for sure. Um, how did Chick-fil-A respond to you? So after a post I'd written about them went viral, they actually invited me to their headquarters. It was one of the pivotal moments that actually led me to quitting my day job because I realized if I have to I have to take off and take PTO to go consult with food companies companies like this is actually my calling wow. in terms of what I, I can do for the world and change and so when I sat down with the Ch Chick-fil-A executives I sat in this big boardroom and they did this whole pomp and pony show I mean they even picked me up in a cow wrapped car at the airport in Atlanta <laughs> and um, they have great marketing <laughs> they do and they and they, they really were so nice and so hospitable to me and my request. I mean, they sat down and they said, okay, you have a lot of things wrong with our food. What would be the list and what would be the priority of what you would want us to change? And back then they were using factory farms chickens that were um, being fed routine antibiotics. And routine antibiotics was something that unfortunately is causing all sorts of issues in terms of creating superbugs and making us resistant to actually fighting those superbugs. So there's no drugs that can really, you know, take on these mm -hmm. superbugs. So it was becoming an issue. And I had the opportunity to meet a former general of the United States Army and I just had like I had a chance to ask him one question. I said, what's the biggest food issue for you? And he's like, antibiotics and the production of meat because it could wipe out the human race. And that just was like 
whoa, that's like serious, right? So when they asked me to like list all my concerns in the priority, that was my number one thing. With antibiotics. Yes, and in the room was the head chicken guy. And he's like, listen, we just don't have enough supply. There's just not enough farms that do this. And I said, it doesn't matter. You have to make the change. You have to require them to do it. You have to lead the initiative. This is what Chipotle is doing. This is something you guys can do too. And within two years, they made the commitment to do it and they've done it. Wow. So they made the commitment to you that day in the boardroom and now they've done it. Yeah. Wow, that's a great story. Yeah, and I mean, there's other things on that list that they've done too. They've removed artificial color from their ice cream and their pickles. They've yeah. removed TBHQ. They've removed, which is one of the ingredients that we talked about in a previous segment with you, that's in Reese's peanut butter cups and in Domino's pizza. Um, and But they have a lot of other problematic ingredients still. They're still using, I believe, dimethyl polysiloxane, and they're also using um, MSG still. And it's one of the, the one ingredient that they they have told me we have tried so hard to remove MSG, but our Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich just doesn't taste the same. And it's because MSG tricks the brain to remembering that flavor. It's an excitotoxin to the brain. And it's the thing that makes us keep coming back for more. That's why I'm willing to wait in line. Yes. <laughs> wrap yeah. around the block. Yeah, but now you don't need to wait. And you can even get it on Sunday <laughs> when you make it in my cookbook. Even make it on yes. Sunday. That's a, yes. good, that's a good little tip. OK, so let's talk about cooking for our family and the different oils. You've brought along some that you find to be very healthy. You back all of these products, starting with this particular olive oil. Is that right? That's right. So this is, um, I mean, these brands, there's so many great brands out there. I just kind of brought what was in my kitchen right. available so that people could see. But I think that cooking with the right oil is the first step of dinner or any time you're cooking. You have to get the right oils because if you're using the problematic oils out there, the corn, the soy, the canola, the cottonseed, if you're using any of those at home, you are setting yourself up for failure because those oils have been deodorized, they've been bleached, they've been, the way they extract the oils from those crops is they're using hexane, and hexane is a residue that's considered a carcinogen, but also the FDA doesn't regulate in our food. I have to say, so many of these terms you're throwing out, it's making my head spin a little bit, going, <laughs> wait, what is this? It's, it's a lot, it, yeah. and it, it, can, it can be overwhelming for people. It so can. how do you make it not so, so overwhelming? So it's super easy. Stick with like a couple of fats in your diet that you're gonna need to cook with. I love extra virgin olive oil. I love grass-fed butter. This is amazing and has okay. high vitamin A, and it's also just really, really great for your brain. It's got omega-3 fatty acids because it's grass-fed butter. It's 100% okay. grass-fed butter that um, the, the where do you get omega-3s from? Omega-3s come from like nature. And so when when cows are eating that grass, they're, they're producing omega-3 in their bodies. When they're eating corn and soy and other things they're not supposed to eat in a factory farm, that's when they're not as healthy. And they've shown that in several different studies that look at the milk production out of uh, a cow. So Okay, so grass-fed yes. butter. Yes, and then uh, coconut oil. I love coconut oil as well. I love making popcorn with coconut oil. I think mm. that is so much fun and it's so delicious and it's actually, it's just so good. It's the one thing that I sit down at night and eat after the kids go to bed. And then this is just something I had in my pantry that I think is so awesome. This is just duck fat. I haven't ever cooked with that. Duck fat is so healthy for you. It's got a lot of vitamins and minerals and it's something that is, they, you know, is not gonna clog your arteries, but I'm telling you, you fry a couple potatoes in here, you'll be crying home to mama. <laughs> in a good way? Yes, in a good way. <laughs> in a good way. I had, I had a southern chef on a show one time with me, he said, slap your mama good. I said, is that good? Is that good? <laughs> And now I'm back in the South and you're throwing some new ones at me as well. Well, you know, I don't know any of these <laughs> phrases. Both my parents were immigrants from India and they butchered all the phrases growing up. And so my husband laughs at me when I try to recreate all the phrases and they're always off. So yes. and I'm, I'm sure the people yes. on uh, on my Instagram and other people have seen me talk live. They see this yeah. all the time and they think it's hilarious. Well, so. you and I met a long, long time ago and um, it's nice to see you again. I know. It's, it's so nice great. to see you. We met in um, some of the fitness classes that I was teaching and then I interviewed you on a morning show in New York a long time ago and um, it's been fun to see how much you have expanded. You're now the CEO of a couple of different companies. Final question for you with your two kids. How do you manage it all? You've got these two companies. You're trying to make sure you do all the things and practice what you preach. 
also, you know, be a good wife and friend? I mean, how do you do it all? It's hard, but I really prioritize my health. And so I think that allows me to do it all because I feel good. I have a lot of energy. You know, I get up every single morning. I have my routines. I get my lemon water first thing in the morning. I have my uh, my, my Truvani shakes every single day. And then I am working out, doing some kind of form of exercise. Sometimes I don't get the full amount that I want to, yeah. but I'm telling you that 20 minutes, that 30 minutes, yeah. sometimes is just what it takes. Even five makes a difference. And one of the commitments it? I made actually to me to myself recently, I was on a vacation with my children and we were gone for a couple weeks and I was like, how am I going to take care of myself? This is a foreign place. We have a foreign kitchen. I got to, you know, go to the grocery store in a different place. I can't just call like, you know, prime delivery or whatever, right? Like this is, this is going to be hard. And I just said, I'm going to commit 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day of working out every single day while I'm on this vacation, because I had that fear of kind of missing out. Like if I just stay away, I won't, I won't get to see my child in the pool or like whatever. Right. And that 10 minutes a day made that vacation so much better. And yeah. it's something that I'm just gonna continue to do anytime I'm away too. So you just gotta Great. prioritize yourself first. Yeah, absolutely. And when you fall out of the vacation uh, routine, then it ends up into your normal routine too. So yeah. you end up falling out of it if you don't train on, on, on vacation. I always say that. Do it on the holidays too, if you can. Yeah. Well, Vani Hari, thank you so much. Where can people find your brand new book? Food Babe Family is everywhere books are sold, and you can come on over to foodbabe.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm always sharing information like this out every single week. Very good. If you enjoyed her tips and you enjoyed this video, please make sure you subscribe to our channel so you get notified when we release our next Your Day with Anna Coyman video.